All right, everyone. Welcome back to the old switcheroo where we're talking gaming retro with Mike and JMO. I'm Mike. And I'm JMO. Join us on our epic quest to research and review all 200 plus games in the Nintendo Switch online retro catalog. Today, we'll be hemming and hawing our way through all 40 games from our first season in a very special episode that we are calling the 16th bit retrospective season finale. Uh, Mike, congratulations on the end of the first season. Uh, super cool we've got this far. Um, before we dive into all of this, tell me about your trip. You just came back from a New Orleans convention, right? Uh, yeah, so I was there for a work conference for five days. Okay. And then um, a few <laughs> extra days around New Orleans, mostly to spend sitting around trying to heal from spraining a toe <laughs> right before going. You hear that, Josh, from Smashing Game Time? You hear that? There's so apparently I'm just some sort of curse that whatever person co-hosts a podcast with me, their for their foot will be in pain um in the near future or the recent past. But so but so but Josh still doesn't really know exactly what happened to him. What what happened to you? Do you know? Oh yeah, no, I totally tripped over my own feet and just like landed on my toe. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you have actually a wide variety of cool falling down stories. Mike is a big Star Wars fan and he was in the location where the Tatooine scenes were filmed and something happened to him. That's like one in a million. I want to say one in a million. It's got to be one in a trillion odds. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So we were um, some miles from the nearest campsite yeah. where they, it's where they filmed the shot of the Banthas in a new hope those are the big like desert oxes right yeah or th really they are basically elephants with like carpets thrown over them that were trained to hold their trunks out of the way right water buffalo kind of looking things yeah and so i'd set up a shot for a group shot set the camera timer ran <laughs> fell um and ended up with this like a metal staple in my hand like from the ground and you were in the middle of the desert where there is no civilization or humanity or any sort of other signs of human life so the popular theory if i remember correctly is that that was probably from the actual filming yeah i'm not gonna say probably but that is the popular theory right so i um i include this because i just want all the listeners to know that mike uh has probably horrible jet lag right now but so devoted to this show that he wanted to you know film today anyway so i definitely appreciate it um we are gonna dive in here with our thoughts on our first season and a um, couple of things i just want to say real quick mike and to all of our listeners however many there are out there i wanted to say in my notes that this was one of the most fun things i've ever done and i accidentally wrote it as this is one of the most things I've ever done. And I feel like it's I think sort of that, that is also true. Yeah. It just reminds me of those like internet, um, you know, memes about like, oh, this is truly one of the movies of all time. And they're talking about like Morbius or something. But, you know, when this first started, I had really small ambitions, Mike. I just thought, you know what? I just thought it would be audio. I didn't expect all these things that you've created for us. The website, www.theoldswitcheroo.com, our social medias. Um, you are literally responsible for any attention we've received. And I, I'm really grateful to that. I don't have social media. I don't enjoy social media usually. So, because uh, it seems like work to me. Is that how social media feels for you? Like, does this feel like you're putting in the work for the podcast or is it fun for you? Um, I would definitely say it feels like work. The people who are doing this more routinely and more well, <laughs> like, I'm not sure how they they do it exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe one day this will be our job. I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> you know, Once the podcast has dozens of listeners, maybe they might be at that point already, actually, though. I don't know. I've seen the subscriber base slowly ticking up. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you. Yeah, you know, I've uh, said thank you in person, but I just want the listeners to know that if you are getting any smiles out of this right now, you know, Mike has really put in the time to make it special for you. So well, to that credit, the, the YouTube videos are you're doing. Yeah, well, sure. So I'm making the YouTube videos via iPad up until this most recent one that I did because we're a low budget operation here. I'm a public school teacher and, you know, we're just scraping by to make it work. And so, you know, it, not that I'm in any place to give people advice, but if I could just give one piece of, you know, word of wisdom is that be nice to content creators on the internet, because it is so much easier to leave a comment than it is to create the thing that people are commenting on. And so like, even if you don't like something, gosh, I'm really appreciative of everyone who's putting stuff out there for me to enjoy for free. Yeah. And if you, if you do like it, if you like this content, this is a bit of a reminder, 
please subscribe if you're not already. Right. Um, you can certainly follow us on the various social media. Also, a giant thing. However you are listening to this, if you're listening to this as a podcast, please give this a review. Yeah. That helps tremendously. Apparently, that is what the people who are successful at this say. <laughs> um, and we're trusting yeah. them because we have no idea. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we've got a few friends and family between us. So, you know, something driven a lot of people to a lot of airports. It's time for you to freaking leave a review. And, you know, speaking of the loved ones around us, Mike, something that I really liked about this podcast so far is that um, I've seen my circle of friends expanding because of this silly little thing. I don't, I don't really have a lot of friends in real life that aren't through my wife. So um, to meet Riri yells from Twitch and do to, to chop it up on Zelda, uh, our Zelda episode with her, um, Josh and Nick from smashing game time. I, I felt instantly a connection with these people and it was, it's just been so much fun because I, I don't reach out to strangers you know, unless I have an explicit purpose. And I'm so glad I did. And uh, thank you again to um, Riri and Nick and Josh from Smashing Game Time. If you haven't already, check out uh, my episode. They have a website, www.smashinggametime.com. I guest starred. I was honored to guest star on episode 109, their first episode of 2024, called Public Domain Nightmare, which like what a great episode for their Steamboat Willie, um, you know, come to Jesus moment. And on that episode, you know, we give our New Year's Eve uh, resolutions. We give our reactions to the news and our predictions for 2024. It was beyond fun. And, you know, Mike, your wife and I probably have had our longest conversation in our history together because of our Mario Kart episode. Um, YouTuber Kat Kenso uh, was uh, on our Mario Kart episode. And it was just really nice to, you know, get to know her because I've seen her through all these like parties and things I've held. But, you know, one on one conversation was uh, was definitely appreciated. Do you have any thoughts or shout outs to our guests that I don't want to jabber on without uh, <laughs> for too long here? I certainly will credit your brothers have some great ideas for the vi- for like the vision of this podcast. <laughs> yes. Shout out to my brothers um, who just are obsessed with Mike and keep really want to like make our our show called um, Mike Lund's Thoughts it was their proposal for the title. And by the way, funny anecdote, you know, when I get into the discord with our Smashing Game Time friends, we're about to start recording and he goes, is it is it still the old switcheroo? And I'm like, yeah, that's all it's ever been. Oh, because like, yeah, I heard, you know, in one of your episodes, you're, you know, wanting to change the name. It's like, oh, my what to Mike Lund's Thoughts? Yeah. Or the Marvelous Mind of Mike. So so thanks a lot, Justin and Jonathan. You're like the reverse SEO. But, you know, how fun are those episodes? Those two guys, they've just always you know, brought so much joy into my life and so much laughter. And I, even if nobody ever listens to this, I love there's a record of just chopping it up with my brothers and Crystal on our Street Fighter episode, like totally bringing it. Um, She just had us laughing and, you know, was just really cool to see someone else connecting with the Street Fighter game. Cause like that game meant a lot to me. That was, I think our first huge episode, not in terms of popularity, but in terms of length. Yeah, I think you would have been disappointed if it was just me for all of that. <laughs> yes, yes, because I'm a little dreading this episode where we re- reflect because I'd like to think you've realized the error of your ways and that Street Fighter 2 is indeed a classic that, you know, deserves all the adulation it's got. But I don't think you've changed your mind. I'm not I'm guessing not. So extra special uh, thanks to all of our guests from season one. And Ryan, who I don't think you explicitly mentioned. Ryan Lay. Yes, he is in my um, picture here. He is in our Caveman episode. Sorry, Ryan. Much love. War Boss 5 YouTube. I I didn't forget you because I was going to get to that when I talked about a previous episode of Caveman Games. But we'll talk about it now, though. Uh, War Boss 5 on YouTube. Ryan, we ran into him at our high school reunion. And just hit it off immediately through our shared love of retro games. And I'll be honest, Ryan, I was a little nervous when you were going to be our guest host. Not that you weren't a great guy, but I just, they would have been the second conversation I think I'd have with you in my whole life at that point. And you crushed it. And this guy, three hours of caveman content, so much to say about caveman games. We had to do our first split episode. Ryan, golf clap to you, my friend. That's, that was such a good one. Yeah. And I think also to his credit, I think he may be the only one that really just had to play games for the first time to be on here. Everybody else was on here because it was games they were somewhat familiar with for at least part of the show. That was all new games for him. Yeah, Crystal is a Street Fighter fan. My brothers are Sonic fans. You know, Riri yells, she's literally a Zelda streamer. When we asked Ryan to do 
the caveman game episode and not to do four caveman games I just gold star. I think, you know, that's why he got the privilege of inventing a new category for our, our, our podcast. So, yeah, I was going to get into it next, but I'm glad we got to it right now. Um, War Boss 5, a.k.a. Ryan. Great, great job. And, you know, something I think it's time. I think it's time, Mike. I don't know. I got JMO's junk brain out of the way. I think it's time for the very first episode of Mike Lund's Thoughts. I think we're finally giving our, uh, our, our audience what they want. Uh, so this is our first podcast within a podcast. Mike, give me your thoughts on season one on Nintendo Switch Online, just life in general. What's what's rattling around in that brain of yours? All right. First of all, the game listing that I have. The game listing you have. You mean the, the, your top 20 games? Yes. So we're going to start off this. Um, I think a lot of listeners probably have the question at this point, given how many games I was able to successfully beat and how many games I was familiar with as we went along. Does he even play games? <laughs> Because we get a lot of your experiences with games growing up. Yeah, I talk a lot. Well, and also, we're going into a lot of console stuff, and that's much more heavily your background. Yeah, you're, you're, I'm not a PC gamer at all, and you yeah. are. Yeah, and so I, th- I thought it would be a bit fun to sort of flesh out where I stand on this. So this is something that I had done for a Star Wars message board I'm on, where they had done a, everybody provide your top 20 games, and then it, we, resu- we got to a combined top 100 video game list. Cool. Did you guys debate it? Like, did you try to come up with the top 10 together or was it sort of a combination? Um, It was it was a point system. Oh, interesting. So in other words, the first one got this many points and then it kind of and so on. So that then in the final thing, it was just a based off of points. Yeah. Mathematically, what's our favorite game? That's rad. Okay, so you so you're going to share our list with our listeners. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to start start from the bottom of this and work up. Sure. Um, So certainly the motivating factor for this and one that I, in retrospect, I have put too long on the list coming in at 20 was Sonic the Hedgehog Spinball. Right. From the Genesis. And one of our best episodes as my brother's guest starring on it. That game holds up, you know, a pinball game where you can slightly influence the path of the ball. I think that's the real genius of that game is that it's the fun of pinball with extra control. Yeah. I kept that in, I put that on that list having not revisited it. And then I played it again. I'm like, I should have put this thing higher. I love that game. I should ask before you keep going, do you want me to chime in with each one or is this going to be like a boom, 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 boom thing? How do you envision this? Say as much as you would like. Okay. It's my podcast. Our podcast. Let's do it. All right. Number 19 from 1996 on the PC, Simcopter. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. So Mike, you know, we've been friends since freaking elementary school like kindergarten and you know Mike being a PC gamer he had access to these games that were real buggy and janky but I distinctly remember Simcopter you have to rescue the people off the top of the buildings and you have to like perfectly maintain your altitude so that they can climb up the rope but it's really easy to get wrong it's kind of like um Moonlander that was that was a whole a whole game in the 90s of just trying to Simcopter also had a steady like audio through the whole thing of like the radio and the music playing and yeah it, it really, Grand Theft Auto owes a lot to the Sim series. Okay, next. Number 18 from 2011 on PC, To the Moon. To the Moon? I don't think I know that one. It's this relatively short story-based game. That it's much more about the story than the gameplay that I highly recommend. It is... It's based on the Honeymooners, right? It's like a Honeymooners spin. Not in the slightest. Okay, do you get what I'm doing there, though? I, I get what you're doing. Okay, continue. And fa- fairly popular as, as far as a very good, like, sh- short emotional story. Okay. It kind of has to deal with finding a place and dealing with people kind of stuff. Okay. Then 1980, from the arcades, Centipede. Centipede's classic. My mom was really into Centipede. And that, I think, is one of the first gaming antagonists I can really think of. Just that Centipede winding its way towards you and then the... Heck this, the hectic nature of the breaking apart, but then also everyone you kill is a mushroom that sort of diverts its path. There's a lot going on in a very simple game. Good pull. I like and it. The, and the rollerball, I think, is just wonderful because it really is a, you get the careful motion versus the, I got to move real fast and just like swiping that as hard as you can one direction. It's actually interesting because it was sort of a precursor to PC gamers having an advantage. Because like, if you were playing a first person shooter, you will lose to a PC gamer every time because the mouse is so much more accurate than joysticks. It's just so much more subtle movement. All right. Um, don't forget to give us the rankings of each one. I think that one was 16. That was 17. 17. Okay, give me 16. All right. Number 16 from 1980 on the Atari 2600, Warlords. 
which Warlord, yeah, I do consider used the best home home console controller of all time, which is the Atari Paddle. You love that paddle. Was Warlords like you had catapults? No, Warlords was so I I I enjoy Breakout, where yeah. it's the simple you control a paddle back and forth and destroy blocks at the top. Warlords is kind of that concept, except it's up to four players. You're in the four corners of the screen, and each of you basically has a wall, oh, you know, an L-shaped yes. wall, and then yes. a paddle that moves around outside of that. It's like um Pong Smash Brothers, kind of. It's like Yes. Okay. I remember this game now. Okay. What's next? Yeah. Which, I, and I will add, we can probably, no, I don't have it on here. I will have to get a hold of War, Warlords here now that I have the Atari 2600 Plus. Yeah. And can my, play these my things text, again. So, was this a gift for Christmas? I mean, sort of. It's what Kat got me for Christmas because I bought it for Christmas and then she wrapped it because she nice. wasn't sure what to get, get me exactly. And I was definitely buying this. <laughs> That's a that's a good wife he got there. And also, it's so funny. So Mike texts me over the holiday break and he has this huge new TV and his Atari to plug into the state of the art television. I was like, man, I love that. All it's right. Next great. one. You can have pixels the size of Kraft cheese. <laughs> Number 15, 1994 from the arcade. Bust a move. Uh, don't, 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 don't. That's actually one of the only games I really got into with my dad. He was a huge fan of Bust and Move 3 on the Sega Dreamcast to the point that in Strauss family, Bust and Move is referred to as old man game. His term, not mine, not being a dick, but um, yeah, Bust and Move is classic. Yeah, you're into puzzlers. I can see that being a game your dad was into. Yeah. Number 14, 2011 on PC, Minecraft. Back before that had a story and ob- objectives, which it apparently has now. Yeah, Minecraft, you know, it was a lot of people know it was just, you know, uh, made by this one guy. But you were playing it back when you like had to send the guy an email and like ask pretty much like it wasn't this thing of like download from the Mojang store. It was like kind of free to anyone who just asked for it. So it had sort of this. I got I got slightly later. So like I, I paid money for it right at, okay. right as it was leaving. Might have been alpha. Right. But it, at that point, it was a planet, not a universe. Yeah, and it was, you know, there was no story. I think it was before they they eventually made it so, like, animals wouldn't just constantly, like, respawn back. Yeah. So somewhere on a server, if it still exists, there is a room just full of dogs that I kept putting in the basement when I, they'd show up as wolves and get tamed and then just set back down there. I'm like, I don't need these. You know, the, uh, the police AI just heard just that part. You're going to get, like, <laughs> docs in a second. Okay, next one. Next one. Uh, so number 13 from 1997 on the N64 is Mario Kart 64, which will ruin some surprises for later in this episode. Looks and if Mario Kart 64 being a top tier game is a surprise to you, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, that game holds up so well. We got into it in our Mario Kart episode. If you're listening to all our episodes, it was literally the last episode. So won't spend too much time on that one. Go watch episode 15 or listen to episode 15 to figure out why we love that game so much. All right. Number 12, 1997 on the PC, Theme Hospital. Theme Hospital, sure, sure. I remember a lot of fun from that one. I've never gotten to management sims. Multitasking stresses me out. But I think if I remember right, part of the fun of that is just when things are going horribly wrong and like all of a sudden everyone's puking in the hallway. I wonder, I feel like that's not aged well since like a lot of people died that way in the pandemic. You know, oh, I'm I mean? actually going to say, I think it, because a lot of it was very cartoonish diseases. I think a lot of it's aged well. And it aged well enough that actually not on this list, but also a good game is Two Point Hospital, which is yes. basically the successor to Theme Hospital. Yeah. Number 11 from 1999 on PC, Roller Coaster Tycoon. Roller Coaster Tycoon. I feel like you're dipping sort of like Theme Hospital, Roller Coaster Tycoon. Those are almost palette swaps. Like the gameplay is so similar. They're fairly different because Theme Hospital is a lot more keeping things running. Yeah. Roller Coaster Tycoon really is like, how do you design a roller coaster? How do you design a water ride? Which I got really good at after having to work a water ride. Yeah, I don't know if they've fixed it in later entries, but my family's big beef with Roller Coaster Tycoon is that, you know, the riders were so sensitive that if you were to build an exact facsimile of, say, Space Mountain, too intense and no one wants to go on it. I, I hopefully I mean, I'm sure there's some way to toggle that if you knew how to you know change the options of the game or the code or whatever. But that's what kept us from going on to the next game. Is it like, hey, I know this is a good design. Why are why are these digital people so sensitive? Number 10, 2011 on PC, Terraria. Terraria. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> Mike, you did Minecraft and Terraria. You only have 20 games. You're, you keep dipping back into the same genres. But yeah, side scrolling Minecraft. Yeah. And 
again, a lot of crafting, a yep. lot of fun. Is One of thing? these days I'll get all those achievements. I'm down. I, I think the last I checked, there's a handful. I have to go back to it. Have you played Tears of the Kingdom? That's the new Zelda game. That's basically Zelda with crafting. I, I have not. Okay. I li- you might like it. Right, what's next? Number nine, 2001 on the Xbox, Halo. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the original Halo. Um, just Blood Gulch. Blood Gulch all night. Jeep Wars. Our own custom. So if anyone has, actually all probably, if you have Game Pass, you have access to the Master Chief Collection. And in the Master Chief Collection, you have access to the original Halo. And what you got to do is you got to go to Blood Gulch with three friends and um, make the number of Jeeps in the level up to maximum. So I believe it's four. And you do the special mode where the only way you're allowed to kill each other is if you run each other over with a Jeep. And so what happens is that these Jeeps are colliding and sending them flying. And you're hoping that the person wipes out and is popped loose from their Jeep because then it's basically a Jaws simulator, kind of. You know, you're kind of tipping over boats and kind of zoom. Ah, I want to play Jeep Wars after this, Mike. That sounds so fun. <laughs> oh, Jeep Wars, Halo, classic. But right. And I think probably the best example of like in-house rules that, you know, my family's ever come up with. Yeah, no, that that was great. Even this, I've started to work through the single player because I finally have bought, actually bought Halo yeah. a year or two ago. Yeah, the first game single player campaign doesn't hold up particularly well. It's kind of repetitive, but it's also like at the very worst, you're still playing Halo. Like you're gonna, it can only be so bad. Yeah, good pull. OK, so we're getting into the gems here. Number eight, 2012 on the PC, Crusader Kings 2. Ah, see another another management kind of warcraft but a lot more elaborate like you have like all these details about your kingdoms like economy right and like the happiness of the average civilian stuff like that yeah you're ba- or you basically go through your dynasty it takes all of europe and parts of asia and north africa and breaks them down to like the county level right it has the whole thing peopled with so every court has people trying to do stuff it's incredible from how much is going on in the background i think it starts to slow down a little bit over time as it at least for me on the computer I had at the time, would start having like, there's too many people to keep track of. Right. There's something really satisfying where it's like you can marry someone off and then two generations later, the Holy Roman Empire is helping you invade. <laughs> you know, there's something weirdly satisfying when you realize, hey, this character's got horrible stats, but he has the trait of depression. So <laughs> legitimately, suicide is now an option for this character. And yeah. the next one's got great stats. will be a better leader. I can't play games that detailed because I just get paranoid that the program is sentient and these are real people. Yeah. And then, of course, I did also try to invade Russia in winter and somehow I thought it would go differently for me. Yeah. And I refused to acknowledge what was happening for some years before I'm like, okay, this isn't working. That's one of the classic blunders, Mike. (laughs) Yeah. It's a classic blunder for a reason. Yes. All right. Next. Number seven from 1998 in the arcades, Star Wars Trilogy Arcade. Oh, so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's that's so it's an arcade game and it's a shooter, but most shooter games in the arcade, you actually are holding a gun. They had the genius idea of making you aim with just a really sturdy joystick with one button on top. And so with just a really good joystick, you can recreate so many elements of the Star Wars universe. So you're aiming the blasters of your X-Wing, you're moving the joystick to swing a lightsaber, you're leaning the joystick to do your speeder bike. Yeah, that game is fun to this day. And I really want some home console version. I think VR would be rad. So yeah, and that is a game that I will play anytime I see it in the arcade. Yeah, you can get far. I think I've seen you beat it. I think I think I've gotten fairly close. I think there's something you actually have to do sufficiently well at the very end. But you can you can get through a lot of that. You at least complete the missions. The the Darth Vader battle at the end of the game is brutal. It requires split second timing. Um, number six, 1998 on the Game Boy, Pokemon. is Pokemon. Nice. I called one. Yeah. Yeah. Pokemon. I, so uh, I don't know if I remember John Hetzel. Remember that guy, yeah. John, if you're out there, leave a review. Okay. Listen, Mike, Mike, you made it very clear what we need from you. Uh, we started the Pokemon underground and this was before e- the, the kids show hadn't even come out. I remember I had the game before the first episode aired in America and we would bring our game boys and our link cable to the, um, Royal Seiko library and we would hold the games in our laps with a book on the table to make it look like we're reading the book and really we have a link cable connected underneath and we're trading Pokemon and battling it felt so rebellious to be playing a video game in the library back in the 90s oh man yeah that's a classic game so what's what's what was your starter then uh Squirtle Bulbasaur or Charmander I want to say I 
this is tricky because I don't actually remember. I think it was Squirtle, but I'm not sure. And I, but I do remember that whatever I had is what you and Jonathan didn't. Yeah. So Jonathan would have Squirtle. No, sorry. Jonathan would have Charmander. I had Bulbasaur, so it must have been Squirtle. Okay. So that did work out. Yeah. Number five, 1990 on the PC, Minesweeper. Minesweeper. Sure. Sure. Classic. I mean, that's up there with like checkers. You know what I mean? It's just a pure game. There's nothing really to criticize about it. I don't like it because I don't think spatially and mathematically at the same time. So I can see how you'd like that. Yeah. yeah. No, I've, I've, I've gone on to, there are versions of that that are like in 3D and stuff and it's fun or mm. hex, hexagonal. Yeah. 1998 on the PC. Um, back what, to what, playing. What number is this? Oh, number four. Okay, I was so we're for sure with top five. Okay, top five, Minesweeper, and then back to games played in school. Uh, Starcraft. Starcraft, uh, yeah. I mean, I think the original Starcraft still has leagues in South Korea to this day. Like, if, again, not never a game I could manage because I can't multi manage. I mean, but... I, I I have never been good at this, so my strategy yeah. was generally to play Terran, and then as soon as it was going badly, all the buildings you can take off and just float away. Yeah. As a cool mechanic. Yeah. And so I, I had a game go about two hours once because I successfully kept moving around and someone jo- gradually dominated the map and did not figure out. Like I had found one small island that I had just covered with turrets. <laughs> so they had to send out like an exploratory air fleet to find you. Yeah. And they had they were having I was sending transport ships around the perimeter of the map to get to resources on the far side without getting spotted. Yeah. Um, and I will always remember that 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 person offered me the allied victory at the end because it was like, that was a very hard fought um, or hard ran away from fight. Yeah. You didn't make it easy on them. No. I remember I played the last time, probably I played Starcraft. I made Dragoon Island. I played as the Protoss. Dragoons are like these mechs that are slow moving, but they're powerful anti-air things. And I don't know why I thought it'd be a good idea to build like a hundred of them. And you remember nuclear launch detected. Remember that? Yes. The Terrans could launch a nuke and you got, I think it was like three full minutes to like find where the nuke's going to land. There was a little red flashing dot. And then you had to kill the unit that is launching the nuke. And I did not find them in time. And like I, a hundred dragoons dying at once, like crashed the game. It was just so much death animation that the sp- all at the same moment that it, the borderline crashed the computer. Good times. All right. Top three. Yep. Number three from 2006 on the Xbox 360. Xbox 3. Geometry Wars? No. Hmm, okay. All right. What you got? Oh, wait. The original EDF? EDF 2017. Nice. Yes. That's going to be one of our special bonus episodes. EDF. As Mike and I probably played the most EDF together of any game. We we platinumed that thing. We We got the highest difficulty. And I remember like the final moment when we fired off that last sniper shot to kill the UFO on the last difficulty, it was almost, I almost hugged you. I know you're not a hug guy. So I stopped, <laughs> but, but yeah, what a moment that game. Oh, if, if listeners, if you haven't checked out earth defense force, it's kind of hard to go wrong. It's, it's so fun, even in its weirdest yeah, most the, problematic form. Yeah, <laughs> so. the, yeah. The basic premise is aliens show up. We assign them a name that assumes their intentions right off the bat, but then they dro- drop giant ants and spiders and robots and Godzilla on yeah. Earth. Yeah, if you if it sounds fun to shoot a missile launcher at a crowd of like 80 giant ants swarming over a skyscraper, I mean, it's it's as cool as your imagination would want it to be. Great game. Yeah, yeah. And certainly for EDF 2017. I mean, things like every building's destructible, so I know we yeah. beat a level just by firing missiles in one direction until nothing between us and the target existed that's right um which is probably not how to fight a war but it's how we fought a war how people are doing that right now mike (laughs) political every episode there it is all right number two yeah number two from 1994 on the arcade and on the n64 arcade and n64 oh cruising usa it's cruising usa cruising yep that game is not as good as you remember it but it's got a soft spot in your heart it's a great franchise i want that on Nintendo on Nintendo Switch Online. I'm going to show, and I might put this in the YouTube video. At the end of the episode, we're going to say what we want to come to Nintendo Switch Online. Mike, what did I write right there? Can you read that? I can't read it. I'm just going to assume it is Cruise in USA. <laughs> Mike, 
probably wants Cruise in USA on Nintendo Switch Online. Okay, so then that leaves your favorite game. What is your favorite game? Let me see if I can guess this. What have, what have we not talked about? Mario, Mario Kart 64 is already in there. Wow, okay, tell me. So my top one from 1998 on the PC is Star Wars Rebellion. Star Wars Rebellion? Was that a StarCraft kind of game? I wouldn't call it quite that. It didn't have... You weren't exploring on a map. You had a gal. You had the galaxy with each of the planets. Um, so you had about two hundred planets if you're playing the large map. All of which are coming out of, or most of which are coming out of, like the Star Wars books and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bunch of characters out of that. So it's taking over. You're you're battling for control of the galaxy, playing as either the the rebellion or you could play as the Empire. Okay, and 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 you could resolve the galactic conflict as you saw fit. Yeah. So, for example, if you're playing as the Empire and you wanted to, you could totally build a Death Star and then just kind of go system to system and just destroy every planet that was a problem. Wow. It really didn't go over well. Like, okay. it, like your popularity goes down significantly when you blow up a planet. That is, if you take away <laughs> anything from this podcast, it is that. There you go. Wow. Deep cut. I'm happy about that. Star Wars Rebellion on the PC, Mike's favorite game. Uh, well, so Mike, so we get back to Nintendo Switch Online. Yes. We have a lot to talk about today. So I wanted to try just for listeners to know that we are doing this at the end of what we're calling our first season. We like the idea that it was the 16th episode. So our 16th bit. And if you're an old guy like me, you get why that's clever. So we have covered 40 games and uh, I want to see how fast I can read all 40. All right. So <clears throat> I haven't tried this before. Mike, you're, any thoughts? Want to wish me luck? Not really. Like it's <laughs> going to happen. So go for it. Oh, come on. This is premium content. I can do it in less than 30 seconds. Ready? All right. Claymates, Jelly Boy, Kick Chameleon, Mario Tennis, Smash Tennis, Super Tennis, uh, Tennis, Shining Force, Shining Force 2, Burke Time, Deluxe, Dig 2, Trouble in Paradise, Mario Bros, Super Street Fighter 2, Champion Edition, Virtual Fighter 2, Gold Max, Gold Max 2, Dr. Mario, Dr. Mario 64, Kirby's Adventure, Kirby's Dreamland, Kirby's Dreamland 2, Pinball, Sonic the Hedgehog, Spinball, Star Wars, Star Soldier, Xevious the Avenger, Excite Bike, Excite Bike 64, Versus Excite Bike, Legend of Zelda, Zelda the Adventure of Link, Baseball, Baseball Simulator, Congo Scaper, Joe and Mac, Rear Strike Man, Joe and Mac, 2 Lost in the Tropics, Mario 64, Mario Kart, Super Circuit, and Super Mario Kart. <laughs> that went much better than I ex- expected. <laughs> Why? It, it actually it reminds me of the time I heard the Micro Machines guy sing us sing the girlfriend from Canada song. OK, listen, those of you who didn't watch television in the 90s, Micro Machines guy, those Micro Machines commercials were notorious for a very fast narrator, very fast talking narrator. Right. Yeah, I think I think he I think he is a world record holder for that. Yeah. So uh, 23 seconds was my was what I got. So I don't know. Pretty proud of that. And I'm proud of us for getting through so many. It's pretty wild to look back and read how many we've done. So Mike, uh, I am going to challenge you here. We're going to do a mini game minute and it's going to be name that chip tune. Are you ready? Yes. All right. So I have um, five, six, excuse me, six game intros queued up on my little cringy sound effect machine here and you are going to hear it and try to remember what game it was we're going to start off kind of easy we're going to get more complicated as we go okay ready all right all right so first one is from the sega genesis Um, you should know this one, Mike. I want to guess that it's Sonic Spinball. but I Yes, guess sir. Okay. One for one. Okay, Sonic Spinball. Next, on to the NES Nintendo Entertainment, Nintendo Entertainment System. Ready? You recognize the start of that song. I do. Um, all right. Now, you, you, yeah. you may check the list, by the way. Yeah, so if it's... Yeah, so if it's from the NES, and it's from that one. That's, I think, got to be Kirby's Adventure. Yes, sir. Kirby's Adventure. All right. This one is not super famous, but it should be easy because this is from Season 1, Game Boy Advance. He's checking the list. That cheater. Oh, yeah. Because I, I was like, is it... Did we actually have a second Game Boy Advance game? We did we not. We did not. Yeah, so this is um, Mario Kart Super Circuit. Mario Kart Super Circuit, yes, sir. All right, now time for the N64. We only had a couple of games from the N64, so I think you should try to do this without checking. Are you yeah. ready? Here we go. Thank you. 
Got it? Oh, he's stumped! These do get harder as they go on, so don't feel bad. Yeah. No, um... Yeah, he's checking the list. Man, I can tell me he's checking the list because it lights up oh, his face. I feel like I... I feel like it isn't two of them. Okay, so... Pro you want to hear it again? I mean, it's definitely not Excite Bike 64. Correct. It is not. Um, But it does have 64 in the title. So, literally any of them. True. <laughs> um... I'm going Dr. Mario 64. Yes, you did it. Dr. It Mario didn't sound, 64. It didn't sound right for, Mar for Mario Kart either, but I didn't think Dr. Mario sound, sound 64 sounded like that. All right. Second to last one. Burger Time Deluxe. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass out. Well, Mike, I... <laughs> you know Do I what? guess Game Boy? Is that the game now? There you go. There you go. All right. Well, I'm going to skip that one because it was a long clip anyway. All right. Toughest one. Okay, ready? This one's beast mode. Beast mode. Okay. Super Nintendo. I'm back before we were recording sound effects. There is a clue at the very end if you want to get all 30 seconds in. I am going to go out and live and guess Jelly Boy. Oh, so close! It was that episode. So it me. was, um, Playmates. Playmates. Yeah. It, hold on. Listen. Did you hear that? The animal sounds? That was going to be your clue. Well, Mike, you know what? Five out of six ain't bad. <laughs> Although, honestly, four out of six, if we're being totally real. Yeah. All right. Well, so, so um. Actually, I'm going to, on that same note. Ooh, we got something for me? I do have something for you. What you got? Because not all of us saw the end of games, but you. Oh, yes. Did. I, I beat quite a few. Yes. So I have five clips from the credit scenes of games. Okay. To see if you can place the music that played at the credits. Did we, without coordinating this, both create name that tune games for each other? We did. Although to <laughs> be fair, we're an audio medium so sure. like, i considered alternatives but didn't want to do something that just where anyone listening is like i don't know what the heck they're looking at yeah i had other games in mind and i was like mm, let's go audio oh i'm so excited okay dang okay so um do you see am i allowed to use the list oh yeah you i can didn't totally... write down which ones i beat yeah yeah you can use the list i believe you beat all of these okay give me the first one all right i play along with us listeners are, are you playing it yes I believe yours is also now filtering out the background noise. <laughs> I could very faintly hear it. So if you want to just turn your volume way up. Mike here with an editor's note. The audio didn't get that much better. So I've added the music in directly for both of our rounds. Rest assured, it didn't sound this good to JMO when he had to try to guess these. Let's try this again. Okay, you do sound a little different. This is so funny. This is really good. Give me a system. Oh. It is really hard to hear them. Yeah, okay. But I, yeah. but I have a guess. So you want to give me a system? Uh, it is the N64. N64. Uh, well, that would... That didn't sound like the ending of Mario Kart, so I'm going to guess that that's the ending of Dr. Mario? 64? Ending of Mario Kart. Wow. 64. Right out the gate. Already sucking. Okay, give me another one. Come on, I can do I can redeem myself. All right. Here he... Sounds like an NES game. It is. Sounds kind of spacey. I don't remember Star Soldier having... I don't know what else it could be. So I am going to have to guess Star Soldier. It is Legend of Zelda. Wow, man. Okay. Will I get any of these? Or will I be accused of not actually beating these games? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next Give one. Another. What's the system? 
SNES? This has got to be one of our caveman games. This is the ending of... Joe and Mac? It is. Yeah, I got one! <laughs> All right, you got one more for me? I have two more. Okay. Next one. All right. That was really rocking sound. Is this Super Circuit? Mario Kart Super Circuit? No. Oh, oh, this is this is Sonic Spinball. It is Sonic Spinball. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I couldn't super I couldn't really hear it. Okay. All right. One more. This is fun. All right. System? Genesis. Oh, Shining Force? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I'm going to give myself a three out of five. Okay. <laughs> like, I was really struggling to hear that. And you'll probably have to go and manually add in those sound yes. files because our listeners are going to have a much harder, easier time than I am. But, Mike, that was fun. Thank you for making that game for me. I appreciate it. Okay. So let's get on then to our main content for today the old Switcheroonies. Uh, we're going to give a shout out to the superstars and Nintendo duds of our first 40 games. So we're just going to kind of quickly give our thoughts on each of these, starting with the Titanfall Award for most underrated game. Mike, can I start with this one? Yeah. Joe and Mac 2 on the SNES. What a shot. You're laughing. I'm wondering if that's also your most underrated game, or you probably said the original Joe and Mac. But these games I always thought were just a joke. You know, like literally they were just kind of known for their humor for being, ooh, silly caveman kind of looks like the Flintstones. Ha ha ha. There's so much going on in Joe and Mac too. You have all these different weapons, these rideable dinosaurs, and what I never in a million years would have guessed the RPG elements of having to romance in very questionable ways, basically just buying women things until they eventually like you. Totally didn't create incels, but... I just really think that Joe and Mac too having those elements in the background completely optional, but super cool. And if influencing the ending cutscene, Joe and Mac too, I can't believe I haven't heard how good this game is. Is yours Joe and Mac? Mine's Joe and Mac. Ah, the Joe and Mac series. We gotta find the creators and uh, link them this episode. A lot of love for Joe and Mac. Yeah, you got agonizingly close on your Twitch stream to beating Joe and Mac. Yes, and I think that's where I will remain. I cannot get past that boss, but I can get to him. But unlike me, you know, you don't rewind just to undo a mistake. So you legit learned this game. That's how much you liked it. And also, you know, not to poo-poo one of your favorite games, but like that game doesn't run super well. It kind of slows down a bit. So the fact that you got that good at that, like that really, you know, you, you got some chops, Mike. You got some chops. All right. Can we go on to the next one? Ben Affleck Award for Game That's Aged Beautifully. All right. I'm going to say Kirby's Adventure on the NES. I think that game has aged really well for two reasons. One, it looks amazing. Like there's so many little details, like the backgrounds independently scrolling to give you this sensation that you're climbing up a staircase. You, It's the first Kirby game to have the ability to swallow enemies and steal their weapons. And even though that's the first game to ever do that, they had this like hidden mechanic. I mean, I guess it's not hidden because you read the booklet where you can swallow two enemies and combine their powers to create a new one. I never even knew that was in the game and I had a great time. And then also it's jam packed with all these mini games in between levels, little quick draw games and claw games. And there are modern games that don't have as much gameplay variety and just snappiness and, you know, um, just really perfectly executed. Sakurai is a genius. And it was obvious to me all the way back in those days. So Kirby's Adventure aged beautifully. What do you think? What's your uh, what's your choice? I'm going to Excite Bike 64. Really? Okay. Yeah. That game was rough for me until we played it together. What What do you think has stood the test of time about Excite Bike 64? I th- I think what I appreciate from it, and I think it's exactly what you don't, is there's an element <laughs> of precision to it that doing? it's not go fast and have things happen. It is. Yeah a bit more, I'm not going to call it strategic because it's not, but it's at least the, you really do have to come to very low speeds for certain corners and then peel out out of there. 
So what's making that what makes that game so unique is that, and I don't know if this has been done. I feel like it's been done in other games like Skate, for example, but at least it was ahead of its time where when your bike leaves the track, now you are independently controlling the angle of your landing. And so there's just so much more finesse required. And I could never quite get the hang of it, but um, you know, it was still really fun to play against you. There's something to be said for a competitive game that is difficult to control that is sort of kind of compelling and sort of ahead of its time. And then the bonus games, you know, you got the original excite bike in there. You got a stunt mode. You got a soccer mode where like, you know, the, it doesn't keep score quite the, correctly, you know, in a sudden death situation, the game will go on too long. Um, but um, it's almost <laughs> as a shout back to uh, episode. Was that episode eight? I think was excite bike. It was, it was episode 10. Yeah, it was 10. You're right. It was absolutely episode 10. Yeah. So how about the Wattam Award? Wattam, um, is this, have you ever heard of Wattam? No. It's this game is the spiritual successor to Katamari Damacy, but your goal is to eat your own butt. And that's, it's a kid-friendly game. I know what that sounds like, but it's just pure, weird, random physics based. So the Wattam Award for weirdest and wackiest game, I'm going Star Soldier on the NES. It is a space shooter and, you know, it's, the cover art is completely forgettable. You just have like this generic space soldier and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to get like, you know, some kind of space shooter, all of, you know, asteroids or space invaders or whatever. And the premise is that you are fighting this rampant com- uh, supercomputer that's taken over a space station, but the supercomputer visually, it looks like pulsating flesh and this weird bioorganic fungus and the space station is sprouting like these bloodshot eyes and they're sending these really ghostly like funereal masks to come kill you it's just this really demonic presence in the game that i did not see coming and then on top of that it created the trap zone feature where you could fly behind the level itself. But the problem is, is that you don't know when that's going to happen. So you have no way of knowing if you're going to go behind an object or in front of it. So it just made for a very unpredictable and weird game. And since I was expecting it to be so straightforward, that gets my Wadham award. What's the weirdest game in your mind? I think I'm going jelly boy. Mm, my boy, jelly boy. What's a, what's what, what strikes you as weird about, old jb i think it's just the way that that uses the jelloness of the character (laughs) to do things yeah you play as a sentient piece of candy that can change into different shapes and there's kind of a decent variety of shapes you could you know turn your little feet into skates or a skateboard you could turn into a hot air balloon a cannon yeah that game like that game is has a soft spot in my heart because you made a joke in episode zero listen I know it's called it episode zero, guys, but if you haven't checked it out, we kind of have a nail in this since right out the gate. And Mike had this whole discovery about a co- communal jelly boy. And it's just, it's somber, but also it was a really fun moment. And that was the moment where I was like, I think we got something here. I don't care if anyone ever listens, you know, this is going to be fun. Yeah. So I, I appreciate your contribution to our jelly boy episode. Skies of Arcadia award for most in need of a reboot or remaster. So. Riri, this is one's for you, okay? Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. There is greatness in that game. And I think you are absolutely right that it is not a good Zelda game, but I think it deserves its place in the Zelda franchise. And so back uh, during the pandemic, Nintendo made a remake of Link's Awakening with this really charming woodblock style graphics. And most importantly, they made the game more user-friendly. It was originally a Game Boy title. We're going to get to it in our system, uh, in our seasons, I mean. And the fact that they changed it so you have more than just two buttons, now the game is so much more accessible than it was on the Game Boy. I want to see that same thing happen to Zelda 2. I want them to get in there, make the game control better, make it less frustrating, you know, tune it up. And actually, I wanted to give myself one more Nintendo... Wait, hold on, Mike. Do you think I beat Zelda 2? I don't know. Did you beat Zelda 2? <laughs> I nintended, Mike. Nintendo. Family computer. That was one of the games I went back and beat after we recorded. And uh, is great. Fight against Shadow Link. Weirdly enough, no Ganon fight in that game, despite the fact that he's on the game over screen. So I guess they just sort of, he's there in spirit or something. But Zelda 2, that game's rad. Y'all are wrong about it. 
and I want it to get its second shot at uh, you know widespread love. Mike, what about you? What do you think is the most need of a remake or a reboot? I am gonna go Kid Chameleon. Kid Chameleon, I I you know it's you know there's a rumor that it's coming. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That game. So I didn't like rumor. that game. <laughs> I feel like it ha- has potential to work as the gimmick. I don't think it pulls it off well. Yeah. It's one. It's one that really felt like okay. There's something that I that can be fun here. Yeah. If improved upon. So for those who don't know about Kid Chameleon, it was our uh, very first episode, episode zero, we covered it. And you play as this kid who gets sucked into a video game and he can put on like uh, nine different masks, I think. And each one has a different ability. Ball in Wonderland kind of attempted something similar, but that game made it way too difficult uh, because it tried to turn it into a one button game for kid friendliness and it just didn't work. But um, I so so question then, would you make it a 2D platformer with like more beautiful graphics or would you do like 3d i think i'd want to see 3d i i think i'd still go 2d platformer really okay yeah i feel like a kid chameleon 3d game would be pretty rad and so then how about the illumination award for a game that would make a hit movie and i said hit movie i feel like i'm gonna get some hate for this because there's a camp that doesn't like illumination as hand- handling all the nintendo franchises but i thought you know you can't deny the success of the mario movie so that's why i'm calling it that I think this one you might be a little bit surprised at. I'm going to go Smash Tennis. I think that that game on the SNES, it was a tennis game with a really good sense of humor with these interactive courts. So you could knock over a waitress carrying a heavy tray of drinks if you hit the ball too close to her. You could full on kill this mountain climber if you hit him from behind. He would fall off a cliff. And that was also the game, I don't know if you remember, it had the cut story mode. So in Japan, there was a whole hidden story mode. If you press the right button sequence at the main menu, it unlocked this whole story mode with cutscenes and character arcs. And it was completely removed for the North American version that we played. So there's already a story there. I'd be curious what it is. And I think it could work really well as like an 80s style sports comedy, kind of like, um, you know, Major League. I don't know if you remember those things or Caddyshack, you know what I mean? And I don't think there's like a funny tennis movie. So I feel like there's an audience. There's there's a window there. So Smash Tennis, I think, would make a fun movie. What was your choice? Because I think it has a lot of possible potential on screen. I'm going to go Dig Tug 2, Trouble in Paradise. <laughs> what? Are you talking about the uh, estranged father angle? I'm not even saying that part. I am okay. just saying I I think you have, you know, throw in something like The Rock as the main character. The and Rock? actually... Yeah. As yeah. the guy with the drill? Yeah. I am not seeing your vision. Keep going. I'm listening. Yeah. And then you you have this whole having to cut off parts of islands. Oh, my. To, get, you, to prevent monsters. You want like a gritty action Dig Dug movie. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing Michael Bay directed huge fissures and the monsters are coming. And like he looks badass and he kind of has the shape of the suit but you can still sell an action figure. Okay. You know something? The moment when everyone in the theater is seeing that action trailer and they're, they're, they have to have this moment of like, is this a dig dug, dig dug too? I mean, <laughs> I remember having a, what is this rampage moment on yeah. the trailer? And then it was rampage. So yeah. I don't that know who's not the bad. fool there. I like that movie. Okay. So uh, let's get into then our top three games. Oh, excuse me. You start with the bottom three. I thought we should start with the negative first. So I don't know if you can shuffle your notes, Mike. Um, bottom three games. I'm just going to go through my bottom three. Yeah, go for it. Right. So number three, the third worst game that we played for Nintendo Switch Online, Super Tennis on the SNES. Just completely humorless, except for the weird cutscene if you lose every game. Just such a straightforward tennis game. And it just didn't have any sort of personality. That you know, The hits didn't really have a good sense of oomph to it. And it was this also the game where the camera to show off the 3D graphics on the Super Nintendo would zoom in on the net between every play. It's just like, there's no reason for me to return to this game. I can't imagine ever doing it. Number third, worst game. Number two, second game. This is going to be surprising because I was much kinder to this on our most our, our recent episode. Congo's Caper. I had to capture footage of that game to use for that YouTube episode because Mike started doing cool game capture footage. And I'm like, well, if I'm capturing footage, I shouldn't rewind like a madman. That probably won't look good on recording. Without rewinding, when you get hit, that that game is maddening. It is 
so difficult to make any progress. The hit detection is so bad that it's nothing but just this unending stream of cheap shots. There's a battle towards the beginning where you're fighting this demon kid. He shoots fireballs at you and you can reflect the fireballs. I reflect. I I reflected the freaking fireball and still took damage. I was just like, how how did that happen programming wise? Um, Congo's Caper made our guest Ryan more boss five. Told you I was going to bring him up later. Create a new category called Nintendo Don't 64. I get it, man. I thought you were being too harsh, but Congo's Caper, that's a miserable game. Cute to look at, but oof. And I'm going to hold off on number one because I'm going to bet dollars to donuts. We have the same bottom game. So will you give me your three and two? I have strong suspicions that's the case as well. So I am certainly, I considered both of the two that you've mentioned. Yeah, Super Tennis and Congo's Caper. Okay, but you didn't I didn't choose either. either of them. Okay, interesting. The two that I did choose, the first one because it annoyed me greatly. So this is, and to be clear, third one, first one you mean this is your third most hated game we played. Correct. Okay, go ahead. I don't say most hated, but bottom. Okay. Um, I am going to, and I think you'll disagree with me on it, but I'm going to go Claymates. Yeah, I mean, it's not great. What was your beef with it? I just find it incredibly frustrating. Actually, honestly, you may, <laughs> if you'd replay that, reach that same thing without the re- the rewind. <sighs> yeah. The number two, because it just, it is as bland and as tasteless as it looks. Is that going to be, no. That's going to be burger time. Burger time, dang. I think in color and with yeah. a bit more space to work with, yep. could be fun. Sure. With how small it had to be for the Game Boy and how everything is just slabs of gray, it it, it is not. If you have a game where the premise is giant food and the giant food just looks like gray slabs, you you missed something. I, I think that was just a bad concept. Or you're honestly. possibly in parts of the South. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we, should we say our bottom game on the count of three? All right. Okay. So I'm going to count down. And after I say one, then we're both going to say the name of the game. Ready? Wait, on one or one and then go? Well, technically one and then go, but I'm not going to say go. We're just going to say the name of the game. Okay. Also, I know the reference you're making. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Z. Zevious. Ah! ZV is the Avenger. Yeah, yeah. Mike wants to punch me through the camera right now. That was the music the whole game. No weapons, ugly, bland graphics. I can't believe this game has its defenders. The arcade game, if we ever find an arcade title. I mean, Defender is more worthy of Defenders than Zevius. Uh, yeah, it's just, I, 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 I was not prepared for just how unpleasant that game is. Like, I would, if I was allowed, I would make students, like, beat a few levels of that in detention. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm mad at them, yeah, you can go to lunch once you beat five levels of Z. <laughs> I thought they got rid of corporal punishment in this in this exactly, state. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, can we go to positive? Our top yes. three games, the superstars of um, our first 40 games. We are going to start with you on this one. All right. So my number three is tough. Anyone who's paid attention to this episode should feel fairly confident in how two of these are going to shake out. So, okay. I mean, can I take a guess? Yeah, if you, if you want to guess for, for this. Sonic Spinball's got to be on there. Uh, yep, that's my second. Yeah, and so we just kind of spoiled your number one. Yes. So your number one is Mario Kart 64. My number one is Mario Kart 64. That is pre-covered. And so the third one was really the question of what would get that spot. And there, it was a tough position to give. I eventually went Excite Bike 64. Really? Wow. I So you had said at the end of that episode that you were thinking of going back and unlocking more stuff. Did you ever do that? I've gone back. Unlocking okay. involves winning. Yeah. So I'm working on game. it. It's a tough game. And you know what? That's actually my motto for how I approach games is that if I can fail at a game and have fun, that is the that, that's perfect game design. If the fun is not contingent on being good or winning, you've really done something great. Because then when you do get good, it's like at a whole nother level. So my top three games, if I may. Uh, number three, it. Shining Force. That RPG series just deserves so much more attention. The second game, I don't think was as compelling as the first. But an RPG is usually not a game I get into because it's very crowded and lots of filler and you know you're like okay this is going to be like a hundred plus commitment and i'm going to be having fun 
for probably like 30, 40 percent of the time. If I'm being totally honest with you, I feel like RPGs as a genre kind of waste time. And some people are into that. Some people love the expansiveness of it. I just usually don't have the patience for it. Shining Force is such a lean game in terms of every single battle has story significance. You're always working your way across the map or defending something. There's no random encounters. The fact that you can retry any battle but keep your experience points makes grinding so friendly. And, you know, it has this sense of humor. It's got this really crazy genre-breaking plot just towards the end. Ryan is right. Shining Force, chef kiss of a game. Number three. Number two should have been my number one because it's in my it's my number one of all time. You know, it's my favorite game ever. And it's number two because of how Nintendo Switch Online presents it. Do you know what I'm talking about, Mike? I mean, I'm presuming this is Street Fighter. Street Fighter 2. The Nintendo Switch Online version. <laughs> Listen, Nintendo. <laughs> I know you're listening <laughs> or spying on us because you're very protective of your IP. Let us configure our controls in the Nintendo Switch Online menu. Do not make me configure controls in game because what you're doing is you're making us play games in a non-ideal way. I have played Street Fighter 2 time and time again on modern controllers and the fact that I cannot use the back trigger buttons on my pro controller because you didn't put that in the language of the Nintendo Switch Online program, that's ridiculous. It, you made the you made my favorite game my second most favorite game in your service because it's such a blunder. But no, just the characters of that game. That to me, the gameplay balance is perfect. You have these iconic personalities: Chun Li, Zangief, M Bison. They have lived past that game. There's M Bison memes. Zangief was in Wreck It Ralph. Like Street Fighter Two is gaming to me, but it's number two because of the controls issue. Which means your number one clearly must be racing game classic versus excite bike ah, i see what you did there no we have the same number one mario kart 64 like it's aged so well to the point that when mike got a switch and i put him on my family plan so we had access to the expansion pack this was the first game we played and the lag is sometimes not great over nintendo switch online and it's still fun the battle mode has never that has never been replicated since I can't think of a single game that has that perfect sort of almost pirate shippy battle because you're not in total control of your vehicle and you're lobbing these shots at each other. And, you know, four players, if someone gets eliminated, they turn into a bomb. There's just so many good ideas in that game and the tracks in that game. It's my favorite set of Mario Kart tracks. And I have beaten all 96 tracks of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This is still my favorite Mario Kart. That's how good it is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Mike, you uh, <laughs> we're going to skip over my next two categories because the Virtual Boy Award for Worst Game on the System, we were going to debate this, but we don't need to. Nope. It's ZV is the Avenger. Knew that that the... one was not going to need a debate, and we knew that Best Game of the Season, or I felt confident Best Game of the Season wasn't going to need a debate either. So on our schedule of this, yeah. where it says we have to agree on this for both, I wrote them them both in already. Did you? Hold yes. it up. I don't believe it. Do you have it on paper? No. <laughs> you no, it's like it, it's on the Google uh drive. We we really know each other, Mike. That's really great. So there it is, guys. First 40 games, Old Switch Roo season one. Best game, Mario Kart 64. Worst game, Xevious the Avenger. And by the way, if you are a Xevious lover, don't get mad. Okay. Leave us a comment. I want to understand why people like this game. I don't like to yuck people's yum. Where's the yum? Show me the yum. You know what I mean? That sounded weird. Don't take that out of context, Mike. Okay. So um, let's do our closing thoughts here. We're going to call this the uh, official old switcheroo swish list. We're going to make some wish lists. One of these I already mentioned, Nintendo, you got to let me customize my controls. And that, look, I can't even believe that that would cost you very much money. You know what I mean? Like there has to be dip switches in there to do this. You can change the controls on the switch. So I can permanently swap the B button and the A button in the switch options. So just take that and put that in that one game or the app or whatever. It'd be so easy. And you got to bring back SP mode, SP mode, the special mode that unlocks stuff for you. Mike is still trying to unlock stuff in Excite Bike 64. And I get it. It's part of the fun is unlocking stuff. But if you have a retro game service, you are inherently going to have like adults buying your product. And we don't have the kind of time we had in the 90s. We ain't kids anymore. <laughs> and honestly, I didn't unlock some of this junk to begin with. I bought the game used. Yeah. That's part of the experience. Exactly. Yeah. You can have the special modes 
in there. It still means people that want to un- unlock stuff can. But if you would like to go, I would quickly like to jump in. I would like to go into Gold Knight and play paintball mode with DK mode on. I would like to be able to do that without having to go unlock things for several hours. Yep. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And so I was going to ask what your game you wanted to come to the to the system, uh, but we kind of already covered that. You went cruising USA. I put a few down. Cru- cruising USA. Okay. Smash Brothers. I, I'm pretty sure Smash is coming. They got a big anniversary coming up. I'd be shocked if it's not added. Pokemon, especially with a lot of other Pokemon stuff, is on there. I wonder if they're not doing it because part of the Pokemon business model is to re-release the old games with better graphics. So I wonder if they're like, well, if we put red and blue, there's we're going to lose so many sales to people who will always like the original. So I wonder if that won't ever happen. And then two others that I've got down are California Speed. Okay, which is a cruise a cruising style game. Yeah, yeah, it's another another racing game. And then Star Wars Wars Rogue Squadron. Oh, Rogue Squadron. I was going to get Shadows of the Empire. Yeah. Shadows of the Empire actually had a re-release, I think, recently. No, Rogue Squadron, I have a very... Rogue Squadron is the... I basically crashed playing that because I was on a chair and tipped backwards so far to pull out of a dive that the controller flew across the room. Absolutely. Yeah, that game... And I should clarify for anyone younger that I played this in the past where the controller (laughs) started attached to the console. So that was not a wireless controller that whole wire came unplugged when it flew across the room. And you know something, you know, VR is kind of taken off. Well, I don't know if it's really taken off, but it's definitely a lot more common. There's a lot of immersive VR experiences where people are like, oh my gosh, I can really feel the action. Mike with a, just a wired N64 controller in his imagination basically <laughs> recreated that experience. I think you might be surprised to learn mine. It is, I want the Clay Fighter series. I think I can have it because Interplay is the makers of Claymates. So clearly there's some sort of relationship between that company and Nintendo as far as getting titles on here. And the Clay Fighter series, not particularly good. I know that. But I think it has a home on Nintendo Switch Online because I think there's something charming about these games that just look silly and are fun and they're not necessarily classics. I don't want to pay for it, you understand. But you got Clay Fighter, Clay Fighter, potentially on the Sega Genesis, but probably on the Super Nintendo, Clay Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo, and Clay Fighter 63 on a third. And the Clay Fighter series, I think, is in some ways synonymous with retro Nintendo. So I want it and uh, give it to me because I've been a good boy. (laughs) I I would also say I would love to see him roll out a bit more in the same vein as F-Zero 99. Yeah. Oh, so like redos uh, with modern online kind of battle royale functionality. Yeah, bring back the Mario multiplayer thing that they had that I apparently missed out on. Yeah, I, I'm kind of hoping, so he's talking about there's a, there's a Mario battle royale that was really cool and it was like only up for like a year. I hope they bring it back um, because I think it was Mario 35, I think is what it's called. It was his 35th anniversary. So I kind of hope that like maybe they'll do like a Mario 40 and do that concept again, but have like, you know, more players. I don't know. Yeah, that was really cool. Uh, Well... I think that wraps it up, Mike. Anything else to talk about before we uh, put this episode to bed? I think the only thing I'm going to say is since we've had a long first season. Yes. I do want to let listeners know that we will be taking a bit of a break from our normal episodes for a couple months. The next few episodes will be some short ones where we'll talk more about what we've been playing in general. Then we'll be launching our second season on April 24th, which also means that we're going to be switching from releasing these episodes on Fridays to releasing them on Wednesdays. So look for the episodes on a new day starting April 24th. Behind the scenes, we're using this time to gear up for season two. Yes, we're basically building up our backlog because Mike and I, you know, this isn't, I know it's a really high quality podcast, okay? I know it seems super profesh. We play sounds on our phones. Sometimes we can't get the music working right. <laughs> but, you know, we, we, I'm a full-time teacher. Um, you know, Mike is working um, in the astronomy field and traveling all over the country. Like, we're busy boys. So we got to build up our backlog of episodes, take a little break, you know. But so I just want to say, Thank you to everyone who's been listening. Um, Next season will be even better than the first. Uh, We have some exciting new guests lined up. We're going to reach out to some more podcasts and uh, we'll be on their show. They'll be on our show. We're not going to go into details, but it's going to be super fun. I'm going to start Twitch streaming uh, via the Twitch account, the old Switcheroo podcast. I have not started yet. I'm waiting for my equipment to arrive, but I'm going to give it a try. And uh, that should be fun. 
So you guys can all give me grief in real time for abusing that rewind function. And, you know, the YouTube episode, you should already be seeing this at this point, but we've gone from still images to full motion video. Well, I should say full motion video, gameplay footage. We're recording our own gameplay footage and uploading it so you guys can see what these games look like as we're playing it. So that should make it even more fun. We're also going to aim for shorter episodes. We're going to try to keep it around the hour, hour and a half mark, try to keep it away from two hours uh, just to make it a bit punchier for you guys. And we're going to be doing some bonus episodes. We're going to have some full on bonus bits episodes, kind of like this one. Well, we're going to be reviewing games that are not on the Nintendo Switch online roster, but are available on Nintendo Switch. So with a relatively little investment, you could play along just like we hope you're planning on with this one. Uh, in fact, Mike, you uh, you got your Switch nearby? Yes. You want to go grab it for me? <laughs> he looks so suspicious. All right, fire it up. He thought he was in the woods. He was. He thought he was in the out of the woods. <laughs> All clear. So... Mike's been traveling, and so I've been coordinating a little surprise for him. He doesn't know anything about this. He is booting up his Nintendo Switch, and uh, he's going to go to the far right to all software and uh, check out his uh, library of games. So, Mike, why don't you fire up all your games and let me know if you see anything. (laughs) I'm so glad you didn't know about this. (laughs) But you see, did it work? You have to verbalize. He's making a face, everybody. Exposed switched. (laughs) That's one of them. And kicks the classic kicks. The k- classic kicks. Yeah. So um the game kicks has just been coming up over and over again. And Nintendo, speaking of wish list, I can't gift games to people. Why don't you have that feature, Nintendo? You are saying no to money. Because what I had to do was I had to go to the store and buy gift cards and send them secretly to your wife. And then she had to wait until you were asleep. And then she had to log in, download the games. And the real stroke of genius is that, you know, she wrote down the number of the the games on your home screen and then opened them up in reverse order. So the trail was covered. Enjoy Arcade Classic Kicks. I played it for the first time today. Mike, that game is awful. It is so hard to play. So visually unpleasant. I can't wait to hear it. You know, you're going to play it and you're gonna, we're going to talk about it next episode. But the game was I mean, so I, bad. If you've ever wanted to beat a screensaver, that is that game. It's funny you mentioned that. So when I searched up Kicks and I downloaded it and I thought, this isn't even a gift. This is like almost Xevious level bads. I'm not kidding. It did not age well. But there is a uh, sort of um, ripoff game uh, called Exposed Switched which is a modern update. They steal the formula, but you, you know, you're, you're blocking off parts of the screen and you are revealing a screensaver behind it. So <laughs> it's the same gameplay, but I think it's so much more pleasant that I thought I should actually give you a fun version of the game you like so much. So Mike, thank you for all your hard work. I mean, I know we, that we're co-podcast hosts, but I could not do the things that you do for this podcast. So um, enjoy kicks and I can't wait till we, till we can actually officially talk about it um, either as a bonus bit or a little mini bonus episode for yeah. season two. Well, and I think this balances out because uh, I have no idea what we're talking about with half the games we play. We're there going you go. into it. There so. you go. It's all fair. All right, guys. Well, uh, we're going to call that game over for today. Everyone join us in season two, where Mike and I are going to be loop-de-looping deeper into the Nintendo Switch online catalog in our epic quest to research and review them all. Next on the docket, get it, Switch doc, was one of the greatest and most beloved platforming games of all time, the classic Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Genesis. We're going to be joined by my brothers. It's sure to be a blue blast. Also, don't forget to visit www dot the old switcheroo.com that is switch a r o o dot com there you can find links to our spotify our discord youtube tiktok and all the social medias you can stay, shake a joystick at you can even leave an old-timey voicemail meaning we could we literally would love to hear from you and especially if you listened all the way to the end of this episode you really mean the world to us we would love to have you be a part of this podcast in some fashion so like comment subscribe review as always thank you for listening to the old switcheroo where we've been talking Gaming Retro with Mike and JMO. I've been Mike. And I've been JMO. Game on, everyone. When you don't have a script, it's technically impossible to make a mistake. <laughs> I think we have a lot of episodes that disprove that. <laughs>